Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide tonight showing you investigating and fixing this non-starting issue on this uh, 2014 Renault Mesta van, same as the Vauxhall Movano. Now I've done two or three of these now with the same problem. It's quite a common issue, so I thought I'd share the video on there, see if it can help somebody in the same situation. Basically, this van's been in, um, it's been in use every day. Um, it was it was starting all right and it ran a couple of days ago, no problem at all. But they've come to it today. It just cranks and cranks and cranks and just won't fire up. It's got plenty of fuel in it. The battery's got plenty of life in it. Um, but there's no fault codes recorded. And I'll just show you, just run you through quickly how we've got to the fault. And then I'll show you what it actually is and how we fixed it. So just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. I'm just going to put the ignition on just so we can uh, reconnect the scanner. So it was, uh, using the snap-on scanner here, there's no, there was no fault codes in the actual log at all. Uh, but one thing I've just checked, just quickly, I'll just get down to it. Uh, the, the fuel pressure there. This is the fuel pressure reading at the main fuel pressure rail, and you can see the actual pressure is 10 there. And it, what it should be to start up. These really want to be anywhere around about the 300 bar area to actually fire up but see this is what it wants to have and this is what it's got but as we crank it over you see there's nothing there at all and from that all I did just going under the bonnet just for a quick check just to make sure uh, this at the front here just coming in the front of the engine this is the fuel pressure sensor in the rail and if you just disconnect connect that it will trick it and default it to 300 bat well what it wants to start basically 341 bar so i've done that but then it's but it still won't start so obviously i know there's no fuel there there's no fuel there there's no pressure there at all um we have checked the injectors and they're not pulsing well there's actually no the low pressure side is not working and because of that it's not allowing anything else it's just shutting the rest of the system down basically so I'll just get the vehicle up in the air now and just show you uh, what the actual fault is and how we're going to fix it. Right, so coming underneath the vehicle, we've got the fuel tank here. And in the fuel tank, just here, this is your fuel sender unit. This is the fuel pump and obviously the gauge for your dial there as well. And it's quite a common issue on these. I've done two or three of them now, so I thought I'd share the video with you all. Um, but just try to show you, it's quite tight to get off with it in position. But I'll just do, I'll just do it to show you quick what the actual reason for the fault is. I'll take the connector off there, a little tab, you just need to flick that up. And if you just look in there, you can see where it's all burnt out on that pin there. Now I've actually had this one running. I just did just crimp that pin back in a little bit and it will run now, but uh, the actual fix is a new sender unit, which I've got. I'm going to fit that in a minute, so I'll show you how to replace that. And also, you get a new connector and a bit which comes with a section of wiring loom, like a repair loom. So I'll just run you through fitting all that as well. Just try to show you up there as well. Just a little bit hard to see at the minute. We can just see where it's a bit damaged inside the actual connector as well. So. Uh, but yeah, I thought I'd share the video, see if it helps anyone in the same situation. But we'll go on now to get the tank down. I'll just run you through the process of dropping the tank down, swapping the sender over, and then show you how to fit the new uh, repair wiring loom as well. I'll just show you quick before we get onto the, uh, the fuel tank, uh, dropping it down. This is the new sender unit. I'm going to fit this first, and then we'll show you popping the... Um, the repair loom in after that but obviously that connector I was trying to show you earlier on is just this one here and it's damaged the pin on the inside there so you, sometimes you might get away with this bit and just um, have to fit a repair loom but yeah it has damaged ours this time so I wouldn't be fitting that but if you check out the description below I'll put links to the um, part numbers for the sender and where you can get them from as well so um, but obviously we're using a two poster ram today it does make it a little bit easier just get it right up in the air but if you're not using a ram you can do it on the ground, it's just a little bit tricky, you might have a couple of jacks just to lower the fuel tank, but um, I'll just put a torch on quick. So, uh, as far as fuel tanks go, these are fairly straightforward to get down. You've basically got a bolt at the back there, which is on this strap here, to another um, with another bolt there. 
you've just got this little cover just under here it's just holding it on with a 10 mil this side 10 mil on the other side you see i've took that one off already at the minute uh, and then there's another little 10 mil bolt there so uh, but that's just covering the actual pipe the filament pipe so uh, but then there's another 17 mil bolt here which sort of clamps both of these uh tank brackets and then another one just on that side at the top there and you want to be undoing that one through the plastic bracket there as well as soon as you undo these two 17s all this bracket and the front bracket uh, that just goes onto that bit there will all drop off together and then two piece two bolt one at the back there so to start with i'm just going to put the jacks underneath it we'll get them five uh, 17 mil bolts out the other 10 mils and we should be able to start lowering it down a bit and as you lower it down these fuel pipes at the front here all you need to do they're sort of color coded so you can't go too wrong a little green tab on there a little green bit on the other bit of the pipe there but you just squeeze them together and then pull them off so you might just have to do that just as you're lowering it just to drop it down a bit enough just to get the sander out so but we'll just get that lowered down first and then i'll show you the next step Right, so I've just managed to get the fuel tank lowered enough without actually disconnecting them hoses there and you can just see a bit better now on the sender unit you can see right in there where it's all uh, burnt out and damaged and so you can see a little bit better in that as uh, in the in the actual sender there as well uh, but next step now what I'm going to do to get this out is just you've got three pipes on it again they're just the squeeze clip type fit in there before I um, crack anything off though First thing I'm going to do is just tap this round with a uh, flat edge screwdriver and just give that a gentle tap just to crack it off. And just give it a tap with the hammer. And once we crack that loose, then I'll squeeze all these and get all the pipes off. And then we can get that out and swap swap it over and put the new one in. And then say once we're done, we'll swap. Uh, I'll show you fitting the new repair loom into place as well. So the repair loom comes with a new connector and a length of wiring loom. We'll have to bear this and then we'll solder connector it into the uh, loom somewhere. And, uh, and we'll have a nice little fix done. So we'll just get this next bit out now. just got out now just sort of springs up as you uh, release it and there is a seal just there on the outside as well and these are quite tricky to refit on they're not too bad you just need to make sure that the seal does stay in the right place when you refit it so obviously we've got to pull this out now just swap it over put the new seal on and then just clamp it down and um, a little tip as well you don't if you're taking this off it's not really ideal to leave this off for any amount of time with the uh, with the actual clamp on because sometimes if you've got a lot of fuel in it the tanks can slightly warp as well so and you never get them to reseal it Right, so our new, uh, I didn't realise our new sender hadn't actually come with a seal, so I've refitted the old seal tonight. And um, the seals normally come in a kit with a new clamp, but it's quite nice to fit a new one. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to just refit this one today. So, um, all you want to do though, when you when you're fitting the the old one back on or the new one, you just want to hold your sender, to push it down while winding it up, and always wind it by hand first till you get it quite tight. It's not fully knit down yet, because it feels a bit of movement there. Now that I've got it at this stage, I'm just going to gently tap it around again with a screwdriver and just give that a bit of a nip. Now, 
So that's nicely nipped up now. And I've just put the, connected all the fuel pipes back on. The next step I'm gonna do is just gonna give all this a quick wash off with some brake cleaner and give it a nice and clean. And then when we do put it all back together, it's just that easy to see that you've not got any leaks once, uh, once it's running again. So we'll just wash that down quick and then we can get back onto showing you the, uh, the repair. Nice and dry around there now. I'll just show you on the uh, on the old sander. You can just see where it's burnt there. It's not too bad. I've seen worse on these. I mean, if it was my own, I might sort of risk it, but this is a customer's car, and you, the last thing you want is it breaking down on them. So, but if you come round the back of it, just see. I quite, can't quite see it very well on the camera actually, but it is quite dark around this area, so it does look like it's burnt it out in the back as well. So. Uh, it's from underneath, it doesn't look too bad on the pins, so you can just see it on the top on sort of the top edge there. So uh, but if we fit a new one, it's just reassuring we're definitely not gonna get a problem with it. So as you can see it's not too bad a job really doing that. Uh, and then we'll just get on to doing the, the wiring loom bit. So. Right, so we've got the new section of the uh, repair wiring loom from Vauxhall turned up today. Uh, so I'm just gonna run you through fitting this now. Uh, I've put some links in the description below to the part numbers um, and where you can get some of these from. And the kit comes with a connector, a length of wire, and it comes with some of these solder connectors, which are real neat. There's two large ones in there and two smaller ones. So what we do is heat them up with the uh, heat gun while they're on the wire and melt the solder and seal it as well. And I've just got some of these as well, some heat shrink, a bit of heat shrink tubing to go on over the top. They don't come in the kit, but again, I'll put a link to where you can get them from because that just neatens it all up as well. Uh, but the first step, now that we've got the new bit of wiring, is we're just going to uh, just pull the connector off there and just simply pull the wiring back a little bit. There is just a clip. It does just hold in a little white clip there. You can just pick that off and then just give you a bit of room. Um, I'm going to just peel this conduit back, take that little clip off there. I'll take that back on afterwards. And then I'll just cut a length for the connector off and just use that and just marry up the wires to the same ones. I'll just run you through quick doing that now and soldering it on. So all I've done now is just separate them wires in order to line them up ready the same with how they come out of the connector. Just makes it a bit easier, but a bit easier to refer to. Obviously I've got the connector block to look at as I do it. And I've just got a pair of wire strippers. Again, I'll put a link to these. Um, but these just really nice, quick and easy tool to use and just strip the wire ready for the solder connector. We've done that we're going to shorten the loom to suit but i'll just match it up and i'll just leave a slight just leave it slightly longer than this one just to uh, just give us that little bit of scope that's all so. one quick thing to take note of if you are using heat shrink over the top as well just make sure you slide the heat shrink over the very first job before you um, get any of the other connectors ready. The idea is that you can slide your heat shrink down f far enough so that when you um, when you've got the heat gun on the solder heat gun on the solder connectors. You don't um, catch any of these. Obviously, if you get any warmth near them, it'll start shrinking. So you just need to make sure they're well out of the way when you put the solder connectors on. And um, we'll just run you now that they're ready. We'll just run you through um, actually doing the joints. 
Uh, so I've just got the heat gun out ready now. I'll just show you before I do anything. I'm just going to slide the uh, solder connectors on on each wire. Obviously the red ones are the sort of medium size. So I've put that on the two smaller wires. I'll just feed them down. And then the, uh, the blue ring ones are for the bigger wires. And the reason I'm putting them down Let's try to show you in there. The reason I'm sliding down is what I like to do. I like to put the wires together, just give them a little bit of a twist to time in, then I'll slide the solder connector over the top, hold them all in place, and then I'll solder them all. If I can space them out, I'll solder them all individually. If it's a really tight gap, I might solder two or three at the same time, uh, but it just depends on spacing. And all I do, obviously these wires are all purple, so I'll just take note one at a time, just marrying them up, just using the old connector there, just to make sure I'm lining each pin up correctly with the wire. So, um, but we'll just get them, uh, just get the heat gun on that now and get them done. Using a Dewalt uh, heat gun tonight, you can get an, any heat gun will do it. And you can get some kits with some different guards in it to protect if you if you're doing it in a tight space and you didn't want to heat what's behind it. Obviously, the fuel tank is here. Um, so you just got to be a bit wary with that, but I'll be, I'll just be heating them up facing the body, so, uh, but yeah, it's not too bad. We'll get that done now. Just got the first one done there and just see just done it till the solder's melted that's shrunk on there grab that side and that's shrunk on there and grab that side and just simply melt the heat shrink over the top because i've got quite a bit of room just decide i'm going to do all these individually one at a time so i'll just get that one done then i'll whiz through the other three just see with the heat shrink on there as well just gives a really neat joint there it's fully waterproof and just makes a really tidy job of it just go around the others quick and get them done As you now see that's all four wires all neatly joined there just makes a good solid waterproof um, seal and, uh, and a nice new connector on it so all i'm left to do now is just going to um, insulate some of this up just wrap just cover put that back on i'll just use a few bits of insulation tape just to hold the loom together pop that all back in put the clip back on it just to clip that on the loom and put the tank back up but as you can see it's not uh, not too bad a fix really and uh, so i've done two or three of these now so i thought i'd share the video with you all so it's becoming quite a common issue and uh, it might help somebody else with the same issue so um, yeah i hope the video helped if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel uh, i'll just leave the video recording while i just finish the last few bits off and put it back together